<laughs> Hi, welcome to the Story Emporium repair shop. Vernon was just telling us a story, Cecil and I. He was telling us what happened to him before he came into our shop because Vernon was given as a gift to somebody, but that somebody didn't treat Vernon very well. And that's why he came to us, but he's happy now. Listen, Vernon, I'm just going to put you down because Cecil and I have a little surprise for you. We are going to tell Vernon a story. Oh, Cecil. We need to ring the bell. Would you like to ring the bell, Cecil? Well, let me help you with this. So here's the bell. Over to Cecil. Hold it. Ring. Well done, Cecil. The story's coming into the room. The story is here. Now then, it's for you, Vernon. Vernon's not his real name. And the story begins a long time ago, in the Victorian days, and it starts in a toy shop. A lot like this, a lot like the Story Emporium repair shop. Because in the olden days, you couldn't get a toy by going into a shop and buying one. If you were rich enough, you went to a toy shop and the toy maker used to make you a toy. Of course, if you weren't rich enough, your mum would get a piece of soap and carve it into a toy for you. Or your dad used to get a clothes peg, maybe make a doll for you to play with. But if you were rich, you went to a toy shop. And one night, it was raining so hard, the streets gleamed, and they were empty of people. No one was out. And that night, the toy maker was making something. He was repairing a toy when there was a knock on the door. <laughs> the toy maker went and opened the door at the back, and there was a man at the door, a tall man with a tall top hat. He was a rich man, you could tell from his cloak and his walking stick. And the rich man said, Good evening, toy maker. Oh, sir, come in, come in, come in. How can I help you? Toy maker, I want you to make a toy for my little boy. It's going to be his birthday, and I want him to have the same sort of toy that I had when I was a little boy. I want you to make a tin soldier. I want you to make a group of tin soldiers. Can you do it? Oh, said the toy maker, I can't do it because... I don't have any tin. Ah, I thought about that, said the rich man. And he reached in and brought out a ladle. And now a ladle is a big spoon that sometimes the people who do the school dinners reach in and put it on your plate. This ladle was made of tin. The man gave him the ladle and said, Toy maker, I'll be back tomorrow. The toy maker set to work straight away. He set up a crucible and began to melt the tin spoon in the crucible. And then when it was boiling and bubbling, he went and poured the now molten tin, it was like water, into the molds. The molds were for tin soldiers. When they dried, and they didn't take too long to dry. He took the soldiers out and he began to buff them up and he began to paint them. And he painted them with red coats, cross bandoliers of white, black trousers, black boots. The trousers had a red stripe down the side and each soldier had a capo and also different kind of faces. Some had blue eyes like you, Cecil. Some had brown, some had green. Some had bluey green, browny gray, but each soldier was different. Some had a mustache that went up like that. Some had mustaches that went down. Some had a little mustache. Some had a big mustache. Some had a full beard. Some had no hair at all. And he put them all in a box and waited for the man to come. The rich man collected them and went home. Now the lucky boy, 
whose birthday it was, lived in a very big house. It was so big, there was one room just for him to play in, and it was full of toys. He was playing with his train set when his father opened the door. Now look, in the olden days, if your dad came into a room, you had to stand up. And you couldn't call your dad, dad. That's right. You had to call him, sir. So he was playing with his toys. The door opened. He saw his dad. He stood up and he said, good morning, sir. The father said, well, son, it's your birthday and I have a special gift for you. Give you joy on your birthday, my dear boy. Give you joy with your present. <gasps> oh, thanks, dad. Uh, I mean, sir. The father left. The boy opened the present. Oh, my goodness, tin soldiers. I always wanted tin soldiers. Oh, and he started putting the soldiers up on the mantelpiece, and they all looked so proud. And then he saw the last soldier. When he picked up the last soldier, that last soldier only had one leg. And that was because there wasn't enough tin in the ladle to make the second leg. Now, some people would see <coughs> a soldier with one leg and say, this soldier's ruined, I'm going to throw it away. But not this boy. This boy took that one-legged tin soldier and said, oh my goodness, you've only got one leg. That must mean you've been in wars and battles and things. And it also must mean you're very brave. You're going to be the captain of my tin soldiers. And he put the soldier pride of place on the mantelpiece, and although he only had one leg, he could still balance, and he was very proud. He looked around at the other soldiers, and the other soldiers looked at him, proud that he was their captain. Well, uh, a servant came in, the maid called Sally. She bobbed and said, oh, good sir, you've got to come downstairs and learn your Latin numbers. Okay, Sally, I'll come now. Don't worry, sir. I'll tidy everything up. Well, she tidied everything up. And that night, something happened. You see, sometimes at night, if you're in your room and a moonbeam shines into the room, Sometimes some moon dust falls on things and moon dust fell on a teddy bear that was up on the top shelf and as soon as it was touched by moon dust, it came alive. The teddy bear looked around. The teddy bear began to climb down the shelves. The teddy bear went over to the big toy box. He dragged the big toy box, opened the toy box, and he said, it's time to play. All the toys came alive. The rubber snakes jumped out. The dolls started to climb out. The train sets came out. And the teddy bear brought the boxes of toys out. He brought the box of tin soldiers out. He put them all on the mantelpiece. But beside the tin soldiers, he put a pink box. Now, the one-legged tin soldier, he was very proud. And when he looked and saw the teddy bear open the pink box, inside the pink box was a ballerina. And she came up. And when the box started to play music, she began to dance and spin around slowly. All the other toys, they looked up at the mantelpiece and they were all in love with the ballerina. And the one-legged tin soldier looked at the ballerina and he fell in love with the ballerina. He fell in love with her beautiful hair, her kind smile, and her red ribbon that held a blue diamond around her throat. But on the other side of the ballerina was another box, a grey box. And that box flipped open, and out came... <sighs> A jack-in-the-box. Now, a jack-in-the-box is a big clown's head 
on a spring with gloved hands. And the jack-in-the-box looked at the other toys. The other toys turned away. They were frightened of the jack-in-the-box. The jack-in-the-box looked. He could see the one-legged tin soldier looking at the ballerina. And he said, Oi, soldier boy, stop looking at her. She's mine. She's mine, I tells you. She's mine. The ballerina dancing looked at the jack-in-the-box and she was so frightened. But the tin soldier, he wasn't frightened. He'd been in many wars. He just looked at the jack-in-the-box with a cold, hard stare and the jack-in-the-box looked back. He was quite frightened himself. She's mine, soldier boy, she's mine. Suddenly, the sun came up and sunbeams came in the window and all the toys stopped. And the teddy bear said, it's time to get back. The snakes jumped back in the box, the train sets, all the toys and dolls climbed into the box. He put away the ballerina, he put away the jack in the box, he put away the tin soldiers. He pushed the box under the bed again and climbed up the shelves. And then he settled on the shelf and came unalive. Well, that morning, the little boy, the lucky little boy, he came in and he said, Oh, I can't wait to play with my tin soldiers. I really, really, really can't. And so he took out the tin soldiers and he put them on the windowsill. But he put the one-legged tin soldier on his own windowsill and he looked across at his men and his men were very proud of their leader. But beside the tin soldier with one leg, the boy also put the ballerina's grey box and she opened and she danced and as she danced she looked at the tin soldier and the tin soldier looked at her seesaw they fell in love together but on the other side of the tin soldier was the grey box and opened it came and out came the jack-in-the-box and the jack-in-the-box jack said oi soldier boy soldier boy i told you she's mine stop looking at her she's mine and he began on his spring to go back and forth and back and forth and he hit the tin soldier and the tin soldier fell back fell back out of the window out of the window and down the side of the house and as he fell, he flipped and he flopped and he saw the ground coming up to him. But he wasn't frightened. He was brave. He steeled himself as he ding, 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 bounced along the road. And he lay on his back and he looked up in the window and all he could think about was the ballerina. All he could think about was that she was in danger from that jack-in-the-box. But, luckily for him, there were two street boys, poor boys, Victorian boys. They had no shoes, they had no underwear, they just wore shorts and a little cap, a scarf and a broken down shirt. And one of them said, Oi, 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 wait there, look over there, there on the ground is our tin soldier light, in it, in it, in it. Oh, that's right, Rodney. Why don't we play with the tin soldier? He probably fell out of that window. Oh, oh, do you know what we'll do, Victor? We'll, we'll make him a tin sailor instead. Good idea, Rodney. I know as to make a boat. Now, in the Victorian days, children could make anything with their hands. And the boys got an old newspaper and they folded it and they folded it and they creased it and turned it inside out and they made a boat. They put the tin soldier in the boat and it had begun to rain and the gutter was filled up with water. Oi, Rodney, 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 put him in the water, put him in the water, we'll sail him. So they put the boat down in the water and the boat started to go. Well, the one legged tin soldier was in the prow of the boat and he was now the captain 
of a boat. He was so pleased with himself. He was the figurehead of a navy. The two Victorian boys ran along the gutter. Oi, oi, look. Oh, watch out, Rodney. Watch out, Rodney. It's going to get down the drain. It's going to wet the dive on him. But it was too late. All the rainwater went down the drain. And the tin soldier's boat, he couldn't help it, also went down the drain. Now, my dear friends, under every city, are miles and miles and miles of pipes and drains and gutters. And the tin soldier went down those dark passages, getting faster and faster as the rain began to fall. Some of the uh, chambers were big and he shot through. Some of them were very small and he was in danger of hurting his head. But at the end of one drain was a rat. And the rat was saying, passports, uh, uh, passports, you give me your passports. If you don't give me your passports, I will take you and I will eat you. Oh, look, there's soldier coming on on little boat. Soldier, you give me passport or I eat you. Well, the tin soldier, he wasn't frightened of a rat. He looked at the rat in its eyes and then he bent over and the bayonet which is the sharp knife, on his rifle, pointed towards the rat. And the rat said, oh, don't stop at me, don't stop at me, and jumped out of the way. Shoof! The tin soldier's boat went through. Hour after hour, that tin soldier went under the pavements, under the hospitals, under the schools, under the buildings, under the parks, until it came to the river. And all the water shot out of the wall and into the river and the tin soldier's boat floated on the river. But Cecil, if you soak water long enough, um, sorry, if you soak paper long enough, if the water gets into the paper, the paper disintegrates. And that's what happened. And the tin soldier fell through the boat into the river and he began to sink. And as he sunk, he thought to himself, Oh no, I'm going to sink into the sand on the river bed, and no one will discover me for thousands of years. And by then, I don't know what will have happened to the poor ballerina. There, on her own, in danger from the jack-in-the-box, but luckily there was a greedy fish. And the greedy fish was swimming in the river. The fish saw the tin soldier, opened his mouth and swallowed the tin soldier. The tin soldier went into the fish's mouth. It was smelly. It was dark. It was wet. But at least it wasn't at the bottom of the river. Now that greedy fish is a greedy fish. And the greedy fish saw a worm just swimming along. And the greedy fish went and swallowed the worm. The trouble is, the worm was attached to a hook. The hook was attached to a line. The line was attached to a rod, and the rod was attached to a man. The man was fishing, and he caught the greedy fish. Whoa, 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 look at that boy. Look at that boy there, flapping away. I'm going to sell this boy down at the market. And so he took uh, the greedy fish down to the market. He had three fish. He had a carp. He had a perch. And he had a greedy fish. He put them on the slab. And a man came past and said, Oh, what am I going to eat for my dinner today with the vicar? Let me see. I think I'll cook the greedy fish. No, I won't. I'll have the cow. Thank you very much. And he went away. A woman came along. <laughs> it's a very special day today, and I'd like to have a fish supper. I'm going to have the grinner. I'm going to have the perch. I can do it in apples and snails. And she took the perch. And then a maid came along. The maid's name was Sally. And the maid thought, oh, my poor little master is very upset because he's lost his favourite toy, a little tin soldier. I know what I'll do. I'll cook him a nice bit of fish. That always cheers him up. Oh, I love that greedy fish there. She took the greedy fish home. She took it home to the home of the boy. And she put it on the slab. She got a knife. She cut it open. And she opened the fish and she said, 
Oh, look, some mercy, look, some mercy. Look what's inside the greedy fish. It's a tin soldier. Now the boy was walking past and he thought, said, Oh, Sally, what did you mean? It's a, you found my toy in a fish? Well, he picked up the tin soldier and washed him. And he said, Oh, my goodness, you are a very, very brave tin soldier. Very brave indeed. I'm not going to make you a captain anymore. I'm going to make you a general and give you a medal. So he put the tin soldier on the fireplace. Uh, Sally came in. Oh, young master, you've got to go down and learn a bit of ancient Greek. OK, Sally. The young master left, left the tin soldier on there with his medal. He was now a general. And beside him was the pink box, and it opened. And inside, the ballerina came out, and she danced to the music. And she looked at the tin soldier, and he knew she was in love with him, like he was in love with her. And he saw his face reflected in her blue diamond hanging from her red choker ribbon. But beside the ballerina was the jack-in-the-box. And the jack-in-the-box came up, and the jack-in-the-box looked, and his face was full of jealousy. And the jack-in-the-box said, Why, soldier boy, I told you, stop looking at her. She's mine. She's mine. And if I can't ever, nobody can. And bouncing back and bouncing forth, he hit and the ballerina fell off the mantelpiece, down, 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 into the fire below. And the fire consumed the ballerina, and she lay there, her beautiful long wooden legs being burnt. And she looked up to the tin soldier. The tin soldier looked down. And he began to rock himself, and he could, because he only had one leg. And he fell down. He fell down to save her, down, down to the fires. And they burned. Well, the next morning, the fire was burnt out. And Sally came in. And Sally said, oh, I've got to clean out the fireplace. And she got her dustbin and brush. And, uh, well, she began to clean the ash. But then she came across something very unusual. She said, oh, look, it's a big lump of melted tin. Oh, dear, I wonder what happened there. And she opened the lump of melted tin. And inside was a blue diamond and a red ribbon unburned. And that, my dear Cecil, is the end of the story. Hey, Vernon. What do you think? Did you like that story? I bet you did. My dear friends, if you have any toys, any toys like Vernon, or like Cecil, any toys at all, you be kind to them and treat them right. Uh, Cecil, say goodbye to the people. Goodbye, everyone. Come again to the Story Emporium Repair Shop. <laughs>